champagne? In married households, the champagne is rarely of a first-rate brand. Good heavens! It's marriage as demoralizing as that! <laughs> I've had little experience of it myself. I've only been married once. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ernest Worthing. How are you, my dear Ernest? Why these cucumber sandwiches? Who is coming to tea? Aunt Augusta and Gwendolyn. And let me say, the way you flirt with Gwendolyn is perfectly disgraceful. I am in love with Gwendolyn, and I've come to town merely to propose to her. <laughs> but you'll have to clear up the whole question of <laughs> Cecily first. Your secret case is inscribed by someone of the name of Cecily. Oh, well, if you must know, she happens to be my aunt. But why does your aunt call you her uncle? <laughs> <laughs> From dear little Cecily, with love to her dear Uncle Jack. Besides, your name isn't Jack, it's Ernest. Yeah. It isn't Ernest, it's Jack. You always told me it was Ernest. You look as if your name is Ernest. <laughs> You're the most earnest looking person I ever saw. <laughs> well, it's Ernest in the town and Jack in the country. Dear Thomas Cardew, who adopted me when I was a little boy, made me guardian of his granddaughter, my Cecily Cardew, who calls me her uncle and resides with me in my country home. So, to get up to town, I pretend to have a younger brother of the name Ernest, who gets in the most dreadful scrapes. <laughs> then you are one of the most advanced Bumburyists I know. <laughs> Bumburyists? You have invented a useful younger brother named Ernest, so you may come up to town when you like. I have invented an invaluable permanent invalid called Bunbury, so I may come down to the country when I choose. <laughs> That's why I can dine with you tonight rather than Aunt Augusta. I have to ask you to dine with me tonight. I know. You're absurdly careless about giving out invitations. <laughs> Lady Bracknell and Miss Fairfax. Good afternoon, my dear Algernon. I do hope you're behaving very well. I'm feeling low, Aunt Augusta. That's not quite the same thing. You're quite perfect, Miss Fairfax. Oh, I hope not. It would leave no room for development, and I intend to develop in many directions. <laughs> <laughs> I was obliged to call on Lady Harbury after her poor husband's death. She never saw a woman so altered. She looked quite 20 years younger. Aunt Augusta, I must give up the pleasure of dining with you tonight. But Algernon, they'll put my table completely out. I just had a telegram that my poor friend Bunbury is very ill again. This Bunbury suffers from curiously bad health. I think it is high time that Mr. Bunbury make up his mind on whether he's going to live or die. <laughs> May I take advantage of Lady Bracknell's temporary absence? I advise you to do so. My mom has a way of coming back suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since I've met you, I've admired you more than any other girl I've met since I met you. I am well aware of the fact. <laughs> The moment Algernon mentioned to me he had a friend called Ernest, I knew I was destined to love you passionately. So you wouldn't love me if my name wasn't Ernest? But your name is Ernest. <laughs> supposing you were something else. Jack, for instance. Jack? No. The only really safe name is Ernest. Well then I must get christened. I, I mean, we must get married at once. I think it's only fair to tell you, Ernest, that I am fully determined to accept. Gwendolyn, will you marry me? Of course. What wonderfully blue eyes you have, Ernest. I hope you look at me just like that, especially when other people are present. <laughs> Mr. Worthing, please rise from this semi-recumbent posture. Mama, I'm engaged to Mr. Worthing, Mama. In the carriage, Gwendolyn. <laughs> Mr. Worthing, I know that you are not on my list of eligible young men. However, I am quite ready to enter your name should your answers be what it truly affectionate mother requires. A man who wishes to get married should either know everything or nothing. Which do you know? I know nothing, Lady Bracknell. <laughs> I am pleased to hear it. Are your parents living? I have lost both my parents. To lose one parent, Mr. Worthing, may be regarded as misfortune. <laughs> to lose both looks like carelessness. <laughs> <laughs> the fact is, I don't know who I am by birth. The late Thomas Cardew found me in a handbag in the cloakroom of Victoria Station. Really? I would strongly advise you, Mr. Weathering, to make a definite effort to produce one parent of either sex before the season is quite over. <laughs> so, did you tell Gwendolyn you're in a town in Jack in the country? <laughs> Dear fellow, the truth is not the sort of thing one tells to a sweet, refined girl. <laughs> what about your brother, Ernest? Oh, 
Also, he died in Paris of apoplexy. <laughs> Better stay severe chill, but won't Miss Cardew feel this loss a great deal? Cecily is not a romantic girl. I'd rather like to see Cecily. I'll be sure you never do. She's excessively pretty and only just 18. Have you told Gwendolyn you have an excessively pretty ward that's just 18? Half an hour after Gwendolyn and Cecily meet, they'll be calling each other sister. Women only do that when they've called each other a lot of other things first. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Fairfax. Ernest, your romantic origin, as related to me by Mama, with unpleasing comments, naturally stirs the deeper fibers of my nature. Your Christian name has an irresistible fascination. What is your address in the country? The Manor House, Walton, Hertfordshire. I will see Miss Fairfax out. Yes, sir. A glass of sherry, Lane. Yes, sir. Tomorrow, Lane, I'm going bumbering. Yes, sir. I hope it'll be a fine day. <laughs>